Now on Bloomberg Intelligence, Muni's in focus. Focus on Muni's is brought to you by Build America Mutual, insurers of U.S. municipal bonds that finance essential American infrastructure and provides guaranteed income to improve any portfolio. Be part of Building America. Invest in BAM. BAM. Insured bonds. How'd I do? Amanda, come on. You can ch chime in there. Go BAM. <laughs> BAM. Oh, she right. sounded like me when I first started doing the show. Yeah, she'll we're, get it. She'll we're get we're, we're going to get you. You just got to really own it and like jump in there. Amanda Albright is a municipal finance reporter, and she joins us uh, from Bloomberg News. Um, okay, Picking Amanda, up the mantle, were... I should say, from Joe Mysack. You yes. have some pretty big shoes to fill there, Amanda. Yes, very big shoes to fill. But no pressure. We, we support it. you. Yeah. We miss him and we support you. Um, there were a couple stories that caught my eye this week because I'm I'm very I have lack of confidence when it comes to my ability to discuss munis. So I want to make sure that I can handle this segment. Um, is Goldman Sachs makes a bet on a muni ETF market, 109 billion dollar muni ETF market. What have they done this week? Yeah, so Goldman has um, joined the um, rush of firms that we've seen that have um, started offering um, muni bond ETFs. Um, Goldman Sachs Asset Management already had a muni ETF, but they are kind of getting deeper involved in the space with four, four new funds. Um, so one of the funds appeals to folks in New York um, that are worried about their taxes. Um, that's been a common theme lately. Um, there's another fund that kind of mimics like a cash-like fund, um, except um, it's tax exempt. So um, unlike money market funds that are paying, you know, upwards of 5%, um, you can kind of shield your um, taxes if you invest in um, their ultra short muni fund. Um, so we've seen a bunch of companies get further involved in the ETF space just because it seems like that's kind of that and separately managed accounts are becoming a little bit more popular compared to traditional uh, mutual funds. And these, these are actively managed funds, right? And you said yes. ultra short, so that sort of sets them apart from others? Yeah, and interestingly enough, um, it seems like actively managed is where um, other companies kind of see more of an opportunity to, to make an impact. Um, the passive space within muni ETFs is very dominated by um, Vanguard and BlackRock. They have two extremely large funds that are both passive, passively managed. Um, and so I think it's a little bit harder for other companies to um, kind of gain market share in, in that segment. So we're seeing most of the launches within um, actively managed. And are they popular? Do I was we know just going to ask that. Oh, he stole it. See, it's a mind meld between <laughs> the two of us. Um, actively managed is definitely making it's growing, but I still think it's really hard to compete with two passively managed funds that are i think when i ran the numbers it was close to 70 billion between the two of them um so i still think passively managed being you know so cheap and so easy for investors to get involved in um is still like we shouldn't we shouldn't write that off um but i think a lot of the money managers are betting that um active will eventually gain more adoption and i'm guessing that these are for people who live in high tax states right Exactly. So it's just offered where? Like New York, California, New Jersey? So there's a California fund and then a New York fund. Um, so when we spoke to the folks at Goldman, you know, they just mentioned that they're still um, hearing concerns about perennially, perennial concerns about high taxes in, in both of those states. Um, and that's, you know, kind of been, we're seeing a lot of demand for munis generally this year and definitely taxes are part of that especially given um folks not knowing what's going to happen next year with tax rates um, so taxes are yeah. front and center let's move to another great story it was a big take uh this week you and a couple of your colleagues wrote about it and the title is harvard's 465 million dollars in tax benefits draw some new scrutiny can you tell us about this big take what was your takeaway and what you learn yeah um so we have a story just kind of examining different tax benefits that Harvard has, just given the very intense focus on Harvard for the past, um, I guess, year. Um, they, we focused a lot on the property side because there's a very um, rich and kind of long-standing debate over um, tax-exempt property in college towns across the US, um, not just in Boston and Cambridge, um, but we found that um, within Boston and Cambridge, 
there is kind of a growing push to have Harvard pay more in what's known as um, payments in lieu of taxes or pilots. Um, and that's basically an annual payment that Harvard makes every year um, to account for the fact that its property is um, tax exempt, which um, this is a debate that could be could be had at any um, college town with any university pretty much because um, city leaders are always going to want more from their universities. Um, but I think just the growing wealth at Harvard and, you know, sky high tuition has just kind of reinvigorated um, this debate. And um, it's a really interesting um, topic and also very relevant to many elite institutions that the, the um, debate that's um, taking place both in city halls, but also in Congress, because um, the Ivy League has become a, a major target um, lately. Okay, a politics at the intersection of politics and, and mm -hmm. munis. Hey, in the muni space, if we can back up for a, what is issuance like, and what are some of the more interesting issues that you see out there? Yeah, issuance has been um, pretty surprising this year. I think it's up thirty eight percent, a record um, first half of the year. That was something that Joe. Um, loved covering um, when he was um, with us. And By the way, he retired. It's, we sound like he's died. He's retired. Yes, he's retired. He's yes. on a beach somewhere. He's um, yes. He's still rooting us on and reading our coverage. Um, <laughs> but there's just been so many um, that for just kind of a preview um, for terminal readers. In a little bit, we should have a story about how a lot of these deals are getting um, totally gobbled up. There's like kind of, you know, the food fight for for muni deals. Um, some investors are kind of um, frustrated by this because they can't get enough bonds that they've put in orders for. Um, and we're really seeing this across the board um, for, you know, even very vanilla bond structures and then, you know, I, it's actually surprised me. There's not been a ton of deals that I've been really like, oh, this is so interesting that they're doing this. Um, it's just kind of a typical infrastructure that we're seeing getting funded and not a ton of like, you know, high yield issuances, but just kind of across the board, um, general obligation bonds, triple A, double A, and, but yet there's so much demand for them. Um, and I think part of that is people are worried that this is a, a rush before the election, trying to get ahead of any volatility. And people are worried that, you know, after November, these sales are gonna go away. So you kind of have to um, get in the market now while you while you can. See, this is exciting. Is anybody on shaky ground? No, I, I'm so surprised that um, everything is just, anytime the US economy is doing well, muni issuers are, they do well, states do well. I just saw Virginia, I think they had a billion more in tax revenue than anticipated for the most recent fiscal year. Like, it's really surprising just how well state and local finances um, have been been holding up. Um, it's pretty remarkable, but that just speaks um, to the broader economy. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it's, it is really surprising, particularly as the whole narrative of the COVID funding is running out. Uh, they're gonna have huge budgets, shortfalls, and I, feel like I have yet to hear that. Yeah, it it we definitely haven't. Where I see stress is more um, higher ed, private colleges. Those aren't kind of typical classic muni credits or, you know, they're not funded necessarily by tax revenues. But where we're seeing stress is not necessarily states and cities. It's more like a private college that sold muni bonds. Um, and I was talking with a colleague today about how um, schools that have been relying on pandemic relief funding, those are the areas that um, now that the, the funding is running out, schools are kind of where the stress is being seen rather than like a city. Um, though, of course, there's probably exceptions out there. All right, Amanda, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Amanda Albright, municipal bonds reporter. Does Joe Mysick like really email you about your stories? Of course. Oh my God, I love that. He's retired, but he's not retired. He's reading, he's listening. Yes, please tell him uh, that we say hi. Um, I learned a lot. That was really interesting.